Dory Clark is what I would say she is prolific there is I was looking at something this morning to share with you on Harvard Business Review and she has done like about 190 odd articles on Harvard Business Review she Dory that's I guess Dory talks about in the context of our conversation reshaping your role and she's written a book called Reinventing You she's written a book called Entrepreneurial You and her new book is called The Long Game and the, the thing that is consistent about Dory is she takes a very entrepreneurial approach to her career and then helps other people to do the same too so when I say she's prolific I think that's just part of how she builds her brand like she realizes that putting her work and words out into the world is how she gets known and um, also another side point Harvard Business Review, generally, the people that write for Harvard Business Review, super academic, like, um, you know, they've, they've, they, they're the professors in universities, they've got PhDs, and Dory's a bit of an exception, so she's written nearly 200 articles for them, and she's not an academic, but I think the reason she has cut through in that in that particular environment is because of her approach, which is what she basically talks on the podcast, so I, I think what she does really really works because she gets into some spaces that maybe are sort of traditionally academic domains and she's able to share her work so um he looks healthy uh what else so quite a few people lost but liked it brilliant 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 good i'm glad okay um so this just a kind of quick summary before i share some kind of insights with you some things to kind of prompt our reflections and um, this is this is the lovely dory here um i like this quote relationships are part of the long game the things that change us as people are the books we read and the people that we meet i like that also make me think sarah sometimes asks people when she's a, a quick assessment of whether you're more an introvert or more an extrovert she sometimes asks people would you rather meet 20 people or read 20 new books and you tend to find introverts like the books and extroverts like the meeting people but I feel like Dory's kind of brought the two things together there in that quote the things that changes are the books we read and the people that we meet uh, sort of meets in the middle that's what, what it made me think anyway and um, you can you hopefully you know now that you can download the pod sheet you can get that from the website also bit of an update we are going to do a weekly very short newsletter in fact I'm loath to call it a newsletter it needs a different name we're going to basically create a weekly email um, that has the links to the pod sheet the pod note the episode so that it's all in one place because I feel like people are just having to look around the website all the time um, and so uh, I need to get that set up in the next week or so if you want to get this stuff more easily we're just going to do it very short weekly email, which has all the links in it for people. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad I've just got to get around to sorting it out and working out where I'm going to put all the links. Two other episodes that might be useful if you think, oh, I quite like this idea of reshaping your role. Um, how to start a side project. I've not listened back to that for a very long time because we did it about two and a half years ago. So, um, But I think it's a relevant topic. And Sarah and I talk quite a lot about how we started Amazing If on that one. Um, and then Entrepreneurship with Jim Collins, who's like the guru of greatness. Um, that was one that Sarah did earlier this year. It's a uh, uh, Jim Collins, who wrote the book From Good to Great. Um, and then Anne Bowden, who is a CEO of Starling Bank. But because Dory has such an entrepreneurial approach to career development, I think they're quite, quite good angles to go off some of the things that she talks about. Podcast blast. Yeah, they would just sound like, boom, I don't know, like kind of, kind of want it to lightly come into your inbox rather than like boom. um I'll think of some names and um, so some of the things that she talks about that stuck out with me and then everybody who listened I'd love to know if there was anything else she talks about in the in reshaping your role so in kind of having career resilience she talks about the importance of what she calls side bets so I, know, I think we probably called it side projects before but basically not being reliant on one source of income or one particular type of work. So her point is, I think she gives this analogy of having lots of legs on a table. Um, and she, she basically says that you're more vulnerable to change when your income is dependent on one place. And so is all of your development and your learning and, and your impact actually. And so she talks about the importance of side bets and uh, where you can maybe earn money from in different places. Which thinks, some people might be like, oh, that sounds weird. I'm so dedicated to my job, but I actually, I mean, it sort of is what we have done over time. Um, and when we started Amazing If in 20, well, 2013, we just started running it as evening courses that were 
I think they were like 50 pounds each to come to in London for 90 minutes. And that that started to give us some money that Sarah and I used to as a learning fund for quite a long time. Like all the money that 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 created from people coming to sessions, we used to put back into our learning or back into helping people. Um, and so this thing of side bets, I thought was really interesting. And, and the part we talk in the conversation is you basically have to connect or the, or the best thing to do is if you're thinking, oh, OK, well, I'll increase my, really, my resilience by my revenue, my income, not only being dependent on one employer what she talks about is basically start with what you love like what is something you really enjoy doing so maybe that is she gives examples of like photography or you know food for example or maybe it's kind of developing people which was what I love doing um, and then think about how you could turn that into some form of income and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be like a lot it's just this idea that it's you're creating options and optionality for you in your career so she talks about you know if you like photography could you start to share sell some of those images on websites like i don't know Flickr or wherever you do it uh, but could you start to sell some of those images if you like food could you be um could you do some kind of uh food blogging for a local paper i've actually done that before i've got free food it's awesome um and developing people i mean that's what i do but what do you love and how could you turn it into something that in addition to your day job could provide a small source of income for you and what i thought i'm going to come back to the victoria your question I, I would imagine that some of the people, the 60 people that are here, I would imagine that some of you have got some side bets and that some of you have actually made money from some of your side bets. And I wondered that, Helen, I mean, Helen, great example, here you go. And um, I wondered what else that you, if you could share with me, if anybody does have what we can call a side bet. And on top of that, it's a side bet that does provide you with some small incomes like could you let us know so that we can kind of see as a community what the options are so Helen says I started this two years ago I'm head of recruitment for a PLC company but I've been a topic skincare ambassador amazing back when I was back in the day at university I used to do a uh, virgin v <laughs> which was is, is, is no is no more but I used to love that I used to go around to people's houses and sell stuff but yeah it you're pa it's something you're passionate about and it's given you another income stream that is a great example um what else? I've taught karate, but there's no money in it. I guess, Steve, I mean, there could be. I mean, there's no money. I, I guess not. I'm not saying it could be. I don't know. You're going to have a Karate Kid franchise, though. So, but but maybe <laughs> Karate Kids with a Z. What's the branding on that? Uh, and then you could. I mean, don't talk to me about ideas. I grow them really quickly. I've suddenly turned Karate Kids with a Z into a franchise model, Steve. <laughs> but I mean, start start with your local village. Um can you teach karate? Look, Victoria's on it now. I rent, oh my goodness, Laurie, that is amazing. That is a brilliant one. I rent out my drive as I live in a city and I'm a non-driver. Slightly different. That is a, that's exactly it. Because she talks about, you know, sometimes you have a skill that you could sell, karate, for example. And sometimes you might have an asset, exactly like you just said there. Like, so there's some kind of income that's happening in other ways. My sister bakes cakes. Yeah, brilliant. I'm doing my coaching qualification to become a professional golfer, playing coaching alongside my day job in the fire service. James, that's amazing. Really good. And of course, they're quite squiggly, like lots of different, lots of different people, lots of different places. So um, I love, I love these ideas. This is why this community is so good. I want to go back to Victoria's question. How do you balance this with a consistent brand for yourself? Um, I have as a live issue at the moment. My stuff's inconnected. Yeah, it's, I think it's, it's a really good point. Um, I mean... I don't think it all has to be directly connected. Like, uh, who is it? Who's Laurie in the driveway? I mean, that's probably not Laurie renting out her driveway doesn't necessarily, it's not a bet that builds her brand and unless she wants to be known as an entrepreneur. So I don't think all the side bets that you do have to build your brand, but they can do. Like it's, that is an option. And if if you want them to do it, I think you just have to find the the narrative that that kind of connects the dots. So for example, one of my side bets was obviously amazing if when I used to work for Virgin and Microsoft and my my day job was in marketing um but the narrative that I, I so I wrote for marketing week I did uh, uh, on career development I ran evening courses and I did my day job at Microsoft and the narrative for me that connected the dots was all about helping people and businesses to grow and I could kind of say and that's why I do all these different things because I'm passionate about growth and I help people and businesses to grow so and that narrative, I think, is partly for yourself. So you can work out what 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 can I do? How how broad can I go? And also says that it makes sense for other people because you you might need their support in different ways. Um, and Steve says I tend to bring karate back to my leadership and mentoring. Yeah, yeah. 
And Martin about podcasts. I mean, honestly, Martin, podcast and monetization is a whole different conversation, basically. You don't make a lot of money from podcasts. Um, okay, so that's side bet. So I just think it's interesting just to think about what do you love and what could you potentially earn some money from? And like I say, I don't think it always has to be a lot of money. I think it's just the, the sometimes it's just the challenge of saying, could I could I commercialize this in any way? Like I love food. Could I write for a local paper? And um, could if they don't give me money, could they give me some space to I don't know, advertise something else? Like what can you what can you trade is interesting. The other thing that she talks about in terms of reshaping your role, as well as the side bets and giving yourself some resilience, she talks about relationships. And um, in, in the chat, we kind of frame this in three different ways. So three different types of relationships, which I wanted to get some of your input onto. So she talks about reactive relationships. These are ones you kind of almost, they're almost a little bit transactional, probably a bit short term, like I want something, you've got it, or vice, vice versa. Um, the second thing she talks about is reciprocal relationships. So these are where we help each other. So it's, and potentially it's medium term or long term, we're in it together. Um, you know, there are some people that I've had on the podcast um, like Sophie Williams, for example, and I feel like we're helping each other a little bit now. Um, and it's got a, a mutually beneficial relationship, I would say. And then the other one is the random one. And this is the one where they're people that you wouldn't normally meet. And you almost can't predict the ways in which they help you, but there's some kind of spark that starts it and sort of good, good things come, but you can't predict it. You just have to put yourself in the place where you're sparking some of those, um, some of those kind of meetings. And so what I wanted to do, get a bit of insight from, and we'll do this with annotation in a second. I'll just make it anonymous for everybody. New people, I will explain how to do this. And um, what I wanted to understand at the moment is two things. First of all, where do you spend the most time? And the second question is, where do you spend, where would you like to spend more time? So the way that we're going to do this is put the annotations in the boxes, everybody. So everyone who knows how to do stars, can you stick a star for me? Do you spend most of your time in terms of relationships today? Are most of them reactive, reciprocal or random? And where would you like to spend more of your time? Instructions for how to annotate for anyone who's forgotten and new people. Um, if you go towards the top of your screen, you should see something that says view options. Like hover your cursor over there and then you will get to uh, annotate. Your little drop down menu will see annotate and then click on that and then stamp and star so it's view options annotate stamp and star if anyone can't get the tech working because they can't see it on the screen or they're on the phone or whatever um, and you want your answer to be included just message me and I, I will kind of manually I will manually add um yeah Martin <laughs> Martin and I have a, like some side chat now about uh podcast commercialization yeah it's, no it's uh I'm very I'm very happy to be transparent about that um okay OK, so what have we got? What themes have we got here, everybody? It looks like the majority of us are in the reactive uh, and we'd like to spend more time in the random, the random relationships. OK, um, so maybe if I share some top tips, um, these are these are unprepared top tips. Um, but for me, for spending for people who want to spend more time in random and also if you have any top tips for this, like let me know in chat. I think I've mentioned before um, lunch club i really like lunchclub.com for random relationships so it is a free service online i used to do it in person actually which i think took more confidence than it takes to do it virtually but you go onto lunchclub.com and you put in a time that you want to meet somebody a time in a day so i might say wednesday at nine o'clock and you i think you, you you there's some drop down menus about things that you're interested in exploring like uh, business growth or technology or startups or whatever it is and they basically randomly match you to somebody who wants to meet at the same time and talk about one of the things that you have selected. And that's about all you get. I think you get an email that says, oh, Eliza is a project management who's interested in startups. That's about all you get. And you have to, you know, you set the meeting up. I think I just send a Zoom link and you have a curious conversation for about an hour. Uh, and it's a really good way of um challenging yourself a little bit to have one of those random conversations and sometimes it's just a it's just a you know it doesn't go further than that conversation it's just an interesting way to spend an hour and sometimes it does sometimes some, they'll say oh I know somebody who or oh I've if that's what you want to do I, I've read something that might help you so sometimes it has a benefit beyond the conversation and sometimes it's just 
you know, it just tests your ability to talk to people for the first time. Uh, but I really, I really uh, rate, rate doing that. And um, the other thing that I've done for random relationships has actually just been like following people on social media, not in like a stalkerish way, but like following, commenting, almost like building a bit of a rapport with somebody socially. And then there've been times that I've turned that rapport into a random relationship like it's gone beyond social we've had we've had a zoom call something like this and um, that takes a little bit longer because you, you know you have to you have to follow you have to comment you have to like but then that can become something more if you want to do that intentionally um wouldn't this be good yeah see this is this is a really good group for random maybe ooh. Ooh, maybe next time we could do a breakout. We don't often do breakouts with you because we all stay together, but maybe um, in one of our future uh, sessions for Pod Plus, we could put you in a bit of a group together, like three people in a group, and maybe you could just have a bit of a conversation about what maybe like what you've learned from Pod Plus. Um, we can give you some kind of question starters to make it not quite so weird, but maybe that is something that we could do so that you could have a bit of that. All right, brilliant. Let's do that next time. I think. Oh, next week's podcast is on ego. Interesting one. Uh, so maybe we'll we'll do 20 minutes of like update on ego to build on the podcast. And then we'll do 10 minutes of a breakout. Oh, Haji. I mean, we could do it in September as well. Maybe we'll do 10 minutes of a bit of a breakout and we'll give you some question prompts and you can have um, you can have a bit of a conversation together. Um, again, no agenda. Just let's let's have a bit of let's have a bit of randomness. Practice what we preach or practice what Dory teaches one or, one or the other. Um, Monica, you're right. We do have the LinkedIn session. This is why I need you all to know what you're doing. Okay, it won't be next week. I promise you, I'm going to put it in the diary. I will make 10 minutes for us to have some random connections. But you're right, next week is uh, next week is LinkedIn. Um, so let me show you some other things. This is the article that actually spurred me on to get Dory on the podcast. So this was the kind of thing that I was like, oh, we should cover this on the podcast, how you can reshape your role. And in this article, uh, which is, again, it's one of her 193 Harvard Business Review articles, she talks about, um, it's a really interesting term, actually. She talks about kind of liminal, how basically we're in this kind of state... It, because of the pandemic, there's this um, kind of liminal state for people in their careers, which she defines as, I've written it down, where uncertainty meets opportunity. I thought it was quite a nice phrase. So a lot, where a lot of people are finding themselves in their career right now is sort of where uncertainty is meeting opportunity. It was what is what apparently the definition of liminal or better a better phrasing of it, the, the in-between phrase. And her point is, other than that just being something to reflect on, her point is that actually what you can do is you can create first mover advantage. So the people that find themselves in this liminal phase where there's a bit of uncertainty, but potentially a bit of opportunity, it's the people that take action now that can create some first mover advantage for themselves in their career. And I thought, well, that's, that's kind of interesting. I can see, I can see how that that could be a thing that could be a benefit of being where we are right now but how like what what do I do to to create this first mover advantage for myself and my career and so I'll come back to the LinkedIn thing in a second and um, so these are some prompts if you kind of think yeah I feel like I'm in a liminal stage an in-between phase um and I'd quite like a bit of first mover advantage these were some prompts that I thought that could help you to you know get get advantage from taking action so they're more sort of coach yourself questions, I think, really. The first is around networks. This is the point, really, that she was talking about in terms of relationship. I think the question to ask yourself here is, who could I connect with for the first time? That like, might be a useful connection for me to make. And who could I reconnect with from a previous time? Like, think maybe like old managers. Who have you not spoken to for a while? Like, if I think about some of the companies I've worked in, I could probably reconnect with a few people that I just haven't thought about for a while. And that might kind of start to refresh your network in a helpful way. The other thing that I was thinking about was in terms of my development, what was something that I might want to learn for the first time and what might I need to relearn because I've been doing it that way for a while, or maybe I've just, I'm just like, if I think about the, this particular app, for example, that we use, there's been loads of releases on this app and there's probably some more quirky things that I can do. I should probably spend a bit of time relearning this. So if you want to kind of get first move advantage in terms of your development, what could you learn for the first time? What could you relearn? I also thought about growth, like personal growth. And my reflections there was, what do I want to get better at? What is something that I do today that I think I'd like to improve in that area? And then what do I want to be my best at? 
Like, what is the thing that I think that is what I want to be known for and be brilliant at? And, you know, could I invest in myself in a way sort of prompted by those questions? And then the last one that I got to was about achievement, probably because achievement's one of my values. Um, and I was thinking, what could I start? What is something that I'd really like to start? Like maybe like their weekly newsletter that's not going to be called a newsletter, uh, the whatever we called it, the boot, the boot, the boom thing going in your inbox. Um, what could I start and what could I scale? What is something that I already do that I could make better, bigger? Um, because I kind of I don't know, dabble with it on the side. But I think this is these for me were just some coach yourself questions, some prompts that if you find, if you're thinking I'm in this sort of in-between phase and I buy into this well, if I take some action, I could get first mover advantage. These were just some questions that I thought might prompt you to do something, something differently as a result. Oh, liminality, the sense of being betwixt and between. What a lovely, what a lovely phrasing, Victoria. Um, any reflections on any of those questions? Any of them resonate more than others? Those prompts, could they be helpful for you? Let me know. I've got one more little tool to show you um, that the podcast took my brain into a different route. Do you think it would help you think these questions might help you to think the network one Harjit says yeah connect and reconnect yeah I just wonder whether it might be worth like 10 minutes after today just writing down some answers to this and seeing if it gives you any ideas about how you could invest in yourself slightly differently reset and re-inspire Yusuf that is also another like inspiration what might I need to reset and how can I re-inspire myself lovely the growth one is, ch is a challenging for me yeah yeah, good. I mean, it'll prompt lots of different reflections. Some of these might be easier than others. Some of them might be quicker than others as well. Um, yeah, lovely. OK, my my last and final thing to share with you is, is this detailed tool. So let me explain it. I don't know how many of you people have seen this before. Um, I used to work in uh, innovation in a couple of different companies, actually. And the like business model canvas was always like the go-to starting point. Like when I worked for Virgin and we were looking at new businesses, when I worked for Eon and we were starting new businesses, this document is called the business model canvas. And it basically helps you to think about if you're going to launch something or improve something, what are all of the different facets? Like who are the customers? How does it make money? How much does it cost? I mean, in of itself, this this is nothing to do with careers, but um, it's very helpful if you're trying to like launch new businesses or start a side project that you want to commercialize all that kind of stuff and um because dory was is an entrepreneurial person it made me think well, what are one of the key tools that entrepreneurs use this document is one of them and i was thinking well how could i take this document and turn it into something that could be an entrepreneurial tool for your career so that is what i have done everybody i have taken that business model canvas and I've turned it into business model me and um, I mean screenshot this and obviously the session is recorded so you can watch it back um, but this I thought oh how could I if I'm going to think about myself in an entrepreneurial way what are some of the questions I might ask myself for example so for for let's just kind of zoom into some of this stuff here I've got your kind of career community who are the 10 people you know who help you to grow? So this could be peers that you learn with, mentors, people that challenge you, people that inspire you because they show you the art of the possible, um, people you listen to on podcasts. Like you don't have to, this doesn't have to be someone that you know directly, but it's 10 people who help you to learn and grow. That kind of goes in that list. This bit here, key strengths. What are the three things that you want to be known for? Because they should be, you know, the, a focal point of your career and the decisions that you make. Down here, this is kind of like at my best. This is you being really honest. What, what do you need to be at your best? Do you need to exercise? Do you need to sleep? Do you need to be energized by being with people? No right or wrong, but kind of useful for you to know in business model you. How do you help to kind of be at your best? This is really interesting. So in the in the original one, you can see over here in the original one, this is swipe this is uh, value propositions uh, but in my version business model me I thought the questions to ask yourself are the value you bring so I help people to what how would you answer that question I help people to develop in their career and kind of build their belief for example uh, my team is better because I get stuff done <laughs> that is why amazing it's better or you know I turn ideas into action if I wanted a more um, a more sellable phrase um, but you know why, why is your team better because of you Core values, I don't think you should have any, any business model me without what motivates you, what makes you you. Um, we've done that on a podcast. I think it's number 42. If you haven't covered values, I would highly recommend it. 
I thought this is an interesting thing to reflect on your channels um, in the business model canvas. They talk about like, where do you sell your product? But I think this is sort of like, where, where do you sell yourself? Where do you show up? Where, where are you? Where are you and your brand spending the most time? You know, is that on LinkedIn? Is that on internal meetings? Is that, you know, do you volunteer? Like, where do you, where do you show up? Because you want those strengths to be showing up consistently in all the places that you are. And then last one down here was key stakeholders. This is your current role community. So this, these stakeholders are like your career community. These are the people that help you learn, grow, develop. These ones are the people that help you to perform in your day job. This is the people that help you to be your best in the job that you do today. You may have some overlap. So for example, Sarah, business partner, is someone that helps me to learn, grow and develop because she inspires me and gives me open and honest feedback, occasionally brutal. Um, and But she's also a key stakeholder because I, you know, I can't do my job without Sarah. So she would be in both of them, but I would also have some different people in those lists. And then last but not least, the bottom here, I thought this is interesting. What do I cost? This is useful to know because it helps you to make decisions. Like there is often a, I always think with earnings, there is a sort of a, a need level. Let me write that differently. Uh, there's a need level. Like what do you actually need to earn because of your mortgage, your childcare, your travel, like all those costs. And then there is a sort of a, a want level. What do you want to earn because you like nice food and holidays in the UK probably. Uh, but and I think knowing this number here is very useful. So, for example, when I left Microsoft, I halved my salary to go and work for Amazing If. And I had to go to this level because a lot of my salary had been want level. You know, I'd had, but, and I had to go, what is, what is my actual baseline? Because when you know what the baseline is, you can be a bit braver about decisions um, because you can, you know, you, it is a choice, but you can potentially have more choices if you look at the baseline and differentiate between things. So what, what do you actually cost? That helps you to get to this. And then where and what do you earn? So for example, when I was at Microsoft, I would have had my Microsoft salary. I would have had some money that I got from uh, writing and coaching. And then I would have had some money that I got from like a tiny bit of podcast revenue or whatever, whatever else. But where and what do you earn? Because obviously what you're trying to do is work on this level. What do you cost and what do you earn? But Again, you'll all have different answers here, but I think that this could just be a useful template if you, it's not going to be for everyone, but if you do want to think about yourself entrepreneurially, you do want to think about how you can have career and role resilience because of your relationships and your revenue streams as um, your legs on your table, this might just push you that bit further to just help yourself that bit more. We are at the end of time now. Very last thing. I'm going to talk about LinkedIn. I'm going to talk about this stuff. Um, I started to share a bit more on our the blog section of our website. I feel like a blog is very 2010, um, but I'm just using it to share some stuff. So on amazingif.com under the blog section, uh, some new things that you might want to look at. This was our, I can't remember if I told you about this last time, but this is our knowledge navigator. It just helps you to find episodes that might be interesting to you on the podcast. This is one I did a few days ago on um, the suggest a guest list. Um, so uh, if you kind of some people said that they didn't know who'd been on our podcast basically and I was trying to think about how I could help people find people so if you want to listen to some people other than us um that we talk to it's like their wisdom and insights that's on the website you can find that they're all linked with um if you download the pdf they're all hyperlinked to take you to the episode and then we've been doing squiggly career summer school every friday on instagram we've got um another two to do we record it and leave it on igt like be live for a few days and then I write them up and so this is all on the blog um that might 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 help you last but not least LinkedIn session next week uh Zara from LinkedIn is going to be running a session for us rock your profile slightly longer session 60 minutes not going to be recorded so if you want it join that session live um she's just going to help you to make your LinkedIn profile as good as it could possibly be and she's absolutely lovely and if you've got questions she will be um she'll be able to help you with those as well as some stuff that she knows is you know useful for lots of people she'll also be able to specifically answer your questions so please please do join us if um if that's helpful otherwise i'm gonna stop sharing and leave you to your day thank you for being here i hope for the new people it's been it's been useful i hope we might see you back on next week's or the one afterwards um thank you as ever for listening and sharing and supporting uh, all the things that we do we hugely we hugely appreciate everybody massively I'm not just saying that we really do um brilliant have a great rest of your week everybody 